He's just a man. And they do extraordinary things. They come on in there and exercise their power over just men or just women. It's important that you understand. That's why I did a whole lecture on homosexuality versus promiscuity. Because if you can't control yourself, if you go to leadership, it's more than likely you'll be worthless. Because your habits will not sustain the pressure of big power. Big power will magnify every little problem you've got. So it's important for us to send a signal to the virgins to come on out to help the black community because their qualifications, though not as smart, are better than those who are leading. That's a metaphysical question. Now, let's, let's do this quickly. And, and, and uh, now, now y'all got to help me. I want to do a little bit of this Martin King thing. Now, I got to take a donation for myself. That's part of what makes me strong. And I don't want to start this and everybody get to leave it. Because then I hurt myself by not taking a donation. So y'all just give me a minute. I got something very startling I think I need to show you. You might find important. And then, how many of you all are willing to come tomorrow? Oh, we got a few more. We got a few more. All right. I don't know. It's a little better now. Uh, how many of you be willing to try to call somebody to tell them to come tomorrow? All right. And it'll only work if you do because no one else knows. And believe me, if it's 12 people, I'll do it like I did if it was 1,500,000. 1,500,000. Now, okay. Yeah, it'd be 15, no, if it's 15, I'm going on. It's 15, I'm in. Now, okay. Al Sharpton wrote a book. Uh, uh, come to the mountaintop or something. It got me all excited. I read his book. I hung with Sharpton a year ago. He backed me up. Sharpton's a strange character. You got a lot of him. He'll work with you. But he's a strange character. But every city needs a house Sharpton. <laughs> and really, and for, for the role that he performs, he's got some weird things on him. And his hair and his style, a lot of things. But in New York, they love Al Sharpton. I'm going to tell you. They love him some Al Sharpton. Uh, it's just an interesting situation. Anyway, he wrote this book and the uh, go tell it on go tell go and tell Pharaoh. And I remember being with him when he told me he got a two hundred fifty thousand dollar advance for this book. And I was intrigued because he ain't never wrote a book before. And it's pretty interesting. You get a two hundred fifty thousand dollar advance and you ain't never wrote a book. And people who write books don't get that kind of money. They gotta publish their own book. Pay the pay the print the book. Anyway, that's another story. So. I was reading this book and he got to talking about how Jesse Jackson is the true leader and Abernathy was jealous of Jesse and history proved that Jesse was the man and Abernathy was just jealous. Now, I thought about Abernathy. One thing he didn't have was ambitious characteristics. He was a very humble, low-key man. I remember reading this book when he said at the end he was at the morgue when they saw Martin King's head open and he, he said the tears went down my face as I saw the final act of dehumanization of my buddy. He says, it's that moment when I looked at Martin's head that I knew that my buddy wasn't in that body no longer. And he stayed with the body all the way until Nelson Rockefeller sent the airplane to it to Memphis to fly all of them out of Memphis into Atlanta. Now, Sharpton got me a little pissed off. I was reading his book, and I turned to the next page. Uh, this is a page, page three, and he goes, I was, I believe, my activities, I graduated, I was. I would, I was, I acted, I saw, I, I was, I, 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 my, me. I said, okay, I'll turn to the next page. I, 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 I said, let me go back and look at this thing about Abernathy, Jesse, the breakaway SCLC and all that. And I ain't going to get into all of them details, but it only led me back into the last moments of Martin King. That's what the tape back there says, last moments of Martin King. Uh, the video is there from Florida and them two weeks ago, and that's what the Cosby uh, girls on the bottom. Remember, Jesse brought the 50000 to tell her to be quiet. She, she, she withdraws from school, goes out and buys a $31,000 car cash, and withdraws from school and says, see, I told y'all Cosby was my daddy. Cosby came down to Florida and then the next week, second week of 
of October of 95, 96, and gives a big donation to Florida a and and makes a joke. Well, y'all know I only give money when my children go to school. And that's right, he built a student center at Spelman, big money at Morehouse. He goes down to Florida a and and drops a donation where his daughter from the rendezvous is at. And she was a white woman too. The, the woman he slept with to make all of Jackson was a white woman. But Johnny Cochran had that white woman in his past, caused him some problem at his highest moment. Uh, been in Pinky Land. <laughs> Anybody here want to uh, uh, confess any Pinky Land activity before we find out later? <laughs> quickly, let me do this quickly, quickly, quickly. 1963, FBI writes a memo. This is the memo from the from uh, my books on the coin and tell pro. This is the actual memo where the FBI says that they want to develop someone with a compelling personality who at the moment that Mark King is totally discredited will replace and become the new head of Negro leadership. Uh, it's clear at some propitious point in time, clear up that Mark King must at some propitious point in time the future be revealed to the people of this country as the Negro and his Negro followers as being or what he actually is, a frog in the God's scoundrel, blah, 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 blah. The Negroes, uh, uh, it can be done, uh, it can be done, uh, confusion will reign, uh, particularly among the Negro people. Negroes will be left without a national leader, a sufficiently compelling personality to steer them in the proper direction. This is what could happen, but need not happen, if the right kind of national Negro leader could at this time be dragged developed. This is 1963. Let's jump over North Carolina a and Let's zoom in on where is Jesse Jackson in 1963. He's at North Carolina a and It's from the book that's out now on Jesse. Uh, uh, where Samuel Proctor, who is the head of North Carolina a and is uh, keying them in on how to beat Mark King because he was Mark King's, uh, he was a student mate of Mark King at Boston University. This is 63. Jesse never met Mark King until two years later. But uh, they called uh, Proctor Jesse's spiritual Merlin. Now, what was Merlin? For who? King Arthur. Okay, he was a magician for Arthur. And so, uh, uh, helped him pull the something out of the stone or something was happening to? Oh, uh, okay. So he could be king. So he could be Mark King. So now he's teaching Jesse how to be like Mark. Some strange things happen. There's demonstrations on the campus. Page 176 of the book Jesse. Demonstrations on the campus. The students made notes. This is in four different books. Made this strange thing happen. You can imagine the tension among those guys who had sweated through the movement a long time before him, said Stanley. Now Jesse was showing up in photos out front looking good. We began to swear that Jesse was showing up in the Greensboro Daily. Even when he was not present, he would be in the picture and we'd say, but he wasn't even there. So in 63, go over to FBI's developing somebody gradually. In 63, Jesse's being credited with doing things that he wasn't even at. The students watching this don't know the significance of what they're watching. All of a sudden, something else strange happens. Jesse then sees the students are getting mad at him for being credited for what he didn't do, so he sets up a dilemma and gets himself arrested. When he gets arrested, he has somebody put out 10,000 flyers all over a and saying, quote, your great leader has been arrested. This is 97. Nigga still ain't great. <laughs> we talking about 63 with no background, putting the word great on his name. We in 97, I wouldn't get a nigga great. All right? It's quick now. So then, so then, Jesse goes to jail. What does he do? Mark King goes to jail in Alabama. What did he write? The letter for where? So when he next go to jail, he planned to be Mark King, 63. He got to be the FBI's man to replace Mark King. He gets himself phony arrested. He sends the letter from the Greensboro jail. Now, I feel that they must have a spiral formula, because there's some Negroes in D.C. That's, now, y'all from D.C., tell me if you don't want this nigga to be like Jesse's son. I look up, they, they got little niggas in D.C. doing letters from the D.C. jail. That's Mark Thompson. He a real, just like Jesse Tyson, doing the letter. It must be some 
agent handbook that says first agent gets into trouble. Then agent releases letter from jail. You know, with that bullshit. <laughs> now, again, maybe I'm just paranoid. Maybe I, maybe I don't know. All of a sudden, Jesse's about to hook up with the head of Duke University, but jumps in, Rockefeller Foundation jumps in, gives him one of only 25 grants to black students. He ends up at the School of Divinity at the University of Chicago, instead of at Duke University, where eventual Governor Stanford wanted him to come. Stanford or Duke wanted him to go into politics in North Carolina, get him out of A&T. But Rockefeller Foundation, on Proctor's insistence, grabs him and brings him up to Chicago. Martin Luther King's man in Chicago was James Bevel. See, you look at it now, it looks like Jesse's bigger than Bevel. But in them days, Bevel was the man. Jesse come in under Bevel. Bevel in 65 brings Jesse into FCLC and eventually takes him to Selma for the first time. Funny thing happened, Danny Young and all the rest of them get down there and said, like Reverend Wyatt said, there was real resistance to him at first. You know, he comes this young upstart to tell us what to do. We've been here all the time. And then he started speaking. He grind all his punchlines. Now these are all of the blacks who get to see him for the first time in 65. Notice that there's something funny about him. Every time Martin comes, he got to be the one to pick him up. He got to be the one to drop him. He always had strains around Martin. His steadily closer attachment to King. When King would come to uh, the field there, Professor Jackson would pick him up at the airport in a limousine for five hundred Jackson, he was hungry, hungry. King began to uh, uh, commend him as out as a second, as now the relationship began to develop. In fact, they say Jesse came down and said Jackson was selected largely in Bevel's urging. Said, and then when they were supposed to be, said, then they come down there, people are down there getting in line, said, instead of getting in line, and he said, that was Jesse. Jesse came up as big, handsome, natural leader, young man, you know, not just as somebody who wanted to take part, but as a leader of the Chicago delegation. And, and it says, uh, says uh, Jesse wouldn't get in line. He started lining people up. He immediately got out of front. Got guardian him. And, and automatically started directing marches, functioning. He wasn't even on the staff yet. <laughs> but he was compelled, obsessed, to be attached to Martin King because the FBI had someone who they were gradually developing a compelling personality. And Jesse's promiscuity, which was as great as Martin King's, was never used against him in the public like they used it on Martin King. The men who were around Martin, who they call communists, Jack O'Dell, one in particular, who, who were told Kennedy, I mean, who were told King, he's a communist, don't be with him. Jack O'Dell was a founding member of Operation Push. They never stigmatized uh, Jesse over Odell like they stigmatized Martin for Odell. I ain't into the fight, just into the differences in reaction. Okay? Uh, notice here, Jesse finally gets with Martin in 65. Coin and Telpro said, FBI efforts to discredit King during his last month. Between 65 and early 67, FBI files indicate that the Bureau's concerns about Martin King had decreased. What had happened was they no longer needed the external wiretaps. They now had inside placement. <laughs> so FBI monitoring the King's records change. We've been trying to get Jesse Jackson's FBI file. All we keep coming up with is a personnel number. <laughs> this is the book that talks about Hoover's homosexuality. The official and confidential secret life of Gay and the Hoover. But the point of it is, and you talk about very importantly, how the mafia used this to contain Hoover. And then that made Hoover overextend himself on black organizations. Why was Hoover, remember the movie Black Panther, when Hoover and them decide they gotta keep drugs out there in Oakland, because the Panthers gonna wipe it out. Think back of all the things that Hoover did against black people that he didn't do against the mafia. If the mafia ever had an adverse impact on the black neighborhood, it would have never got to be so strong if Hoover had done to hit what he did to Marcus Garvey. Anyway. And part of how Hoover was not attacked in the black community was that many people thought he was a Negro. Hoover had no daddy's name on his birth certificate. 
Many people allege that he was a mulatto in the early days of Hoover. He went around the black community and was called a black man. And that's how the apprehensions of Hoover never escalated because they kept saying he's a Negro. Last days of our king. Go back to Abernathy's book. Everybody says, don't get it, cuz. Abernathy talked about Martin having sex. If you can't deal with the reality of someone's promiscuity, then you can never understand how the forces used it to make on or to escalate his demise. If you make a commitment to a woman and you don't keep that commitment and the woman don't catch you, it's all right because you lose in the ultimate scheme of commitments when you need that extra in the blind thing and something works against you. Now that's a whole other law now. Do we want to live under that law? If we do, we've got to operate because we can win, but we've got to operate under that other law that don't nobody have to look but to be in effect. And if we do that, we work it off, we got it. Yeah, but don't nobody want to go there, so they don't want to go there. Now, let's, let's go there. Uh, this is now in the last days. Jesse Jackson and James Bevel are the major adversaries against Martin having the march on Washington. They're the major adversaries against Martin going back to uh, uh, against the war in Vietnam. And here's Abernathy talking about in the last six staff meetings of Martin King's life, he walked out of five of them because Jesse Jackson and James Bevel got up on chairs in the meeting and started talking down to the other staff members and demanded that they cut Martin Luther King loose. And Martin walked out of five of the last six meetings before he died. And in Dick Gregory's book and Mark Lane's book, you notice if you watch the index, it goes March 28th, March 29th. It skips March 30th, which is Martin's last staff meeting. This is the big meeting where finally he comes back on Jesse Jackson. And everybody says, that's the maddest I ever seen Martin at any staff member ever. Martin doesn't make up with Jesse until he leans over the balcony to tell him he can come to dinner that night. And that's another story. <laughs> now, quick, quickly, because I want to end this. This is our last days of Martin King. It's back there. The full version takes four hours, so i got to do it in four more minutes. Uh, uh, and so, uh, how do we bail out? They're saying, we can't go into Washington, we'll fail. How do we bail them out? What do you mean bail out, Mark said. If we, what do you mean? If we don't succeed, if we don't get any kind of results, then how do we bail out the situation? Mark's eyes flash. I don't care about bailing out. I just want to see these, I just want these people to be seen by the American public and my poor people. They're invisible now. If the public could just see them, then something would be done. We don't like it. If we don't make any progress, we'll lose faith. Martin listened with barely constrained anger. He had seen visions of Marks, Mississippi, that were haunting for the rest of his short life. And these two were talking about bailing out and saving face. And he argued with them at great length, trying to make them see the logic of his plan, trying to convince them that they had to take chances if they were going to accomplish great things. But they were unrelenting in their opposition. They don't talk about that today while they out act like they want to hear what James or Ray got to say. They just want to make sure a great mumbles some shit for his side. He don't say, Jackson, Bevel. He don't stop mumbling some stuff. In fact, many of the major leaders of today did not arise until their real daddies died. All of them rose off of someone else's death. That's a whole nother subject. And another thing I'm going to tell you what's wrong in the black community, the state of the black community is that traditional black leadership was elder-based. We now run on our organizational leadership and institutional leadership. Young people of uh, temperate stages who are still going through growth in life who lead large volumes of people when it should be elder-based who then instruct leadership, who then guide the masses. We've taken the elder, we've become American. We've taken elder out of the leadership base. But we're going back. Because leadership tends to be too tepid, too insecure. I got a big problem. I'm the FBI agent. I'm everything. They keep calling me everything under the sun. I don't have to even give a day's damn. We just got to keep going. We, we know where we're going. I don't know where they're going. 
I'm laughing. I look and watch what they do. I be laughing sometimes that someone even follow that. But some people ain't fit to stand where we standing. Martin Blitzen with barely constrained anger. He had seen visions of Mars, Mississippi that would haunt him for the rest of his short life. These two were talking out about bailing out, saving face. He argued with them in great length, trying to make them see the logic of his plan, trying to convince them we had to take chances if we were going to accomplish great things. But they were unremitting in their opposition. Two young pragmatists were lecturing the older, more experienced idealists. Finally, Mark broke off the debate and left the meeting. He left the meeting five out of six times before he died. As he noticed, they kept edging into his chest. They was all up in his chest too tight. He noticed they was too tight on him. And uh, interesting, today, Mr. Farrakhan was on CNN at 4.30, and, and I saw him do the same thing to him they did to Harold Washington before they killed him. They turned to Louis Farrakhan and said, well, Ben Shavers just joined your organization. Is he not your heir apparent? And Farrakhan, because I've talked to him personally about this, and before I gave the public lecture on what happened to Harold Washington, I gave it to the minister personally. And he came out and supported me at the mosque that Sunday to tell them to come hear the lecture. And the thing they kept telling Harold Washington before he died was, Harold, Harold, if anything would happen to you tomorrow, who would? And they just kept wanting him to name the right damn name. And if he named that name, they would have capped his ass the next morning. And Harold, he listened to that question, he went, ooh. He hit the table and said, I run it from the grave. He didn't name the name they wanted. Now, the key thing is this. The same man that told him that he should replace Harold Washington was the same man that told Jesse Jackson he should replace Martin King. A white man in Chicago named Don Rose. I'm going to show you him real quickly as I get this session. Same man from 68 all the way up to uh, 80, when, uh, uh, 87 is when Martin died. Here, focus up. I'm sorry, uh, Harold died in 87. Here we go here. This is uh, uh, Martin gets to Memphis. Uh, Martin finds out that Andy didn't, Andy's pointing like Jesse's pointing at that phony spot. Uh, Martin gets to Memphis, says Andy didn't explain why Andy didn't go to a meeting he was supposed to. Say so Andy didn't go to the hearing. Martin was furious. Some things couldn't be helped, but this omission was inexcusable. Andy had been made executive uh, president of SELC just so he could speak for the organization on such occasions. He was second in command. He had failed to come through again. Martin was highly vocal in his expression of dissatisfaction. That's two days before Martin dies. Now all you can see in the last days of Martin King is all you will see him pissed at everybody. I'm pissed at you. I'm pissed at you. I'm pissed at you. I'm pissed at you. Ralph, the night before he dies, the speech that he says, I've been to the mountaintop, he didn't go to. He says, Ralph, I want you to go get that speech for me tonight at the Masonic Temple. And Ralph says, Martin, you know that people are going to be asking for you. He says, come on. He said, no, I want you to speak. He said, well, let me take Jesse with me. Let me let Jesse speak. He said, Ralph, I'm telling you now, only you can speak for me, Ralph. Only you will speak at that meeting tonight at the temple route. You can take Jesse, but Jesse's not to speak for me. And I'm going to show you him saying that. Yeah, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, time to get free. That's what time it is. I'm going to run out of time on these other things. Okay. I just go to the whole card then. And on the mysterious steps of New World Order, if anybody got this picture, that night when they get to the hall, they get to the hall, when they get to the hall, Mar uh, uh, Abernathy sees all these people. He says, man, he gets on the stage, people are hollering, they're waiting for Martin. He says, look, he turns to Jesse, he says, look, I'm, I better call Martin. Jesse says, don't call him. What are you going to call Martin for? If you don't want to give a speech, I'll give it. After that, I lifted my head back and I ran to the telephone. 
called Mark. Mark comes to the temple. He gives the speech to everybody. I've been to the mountaintop. But, but I want you, if you've got that film at home, you've got the iron the prize, watch Mark turn around after he gives that speech and walks back to the people standing there and watch Jesse go. And he sees the people cheering and he touches Mark again. And he looks real like Judas. And you'll see it all over his face. The picture won't lie. It's in the tape, in the Mysterious Deaths video, it's in there, in the third tape. Now, Mark gives the speech. Somebody changes Mark's room from 204. Some white man comes in and says, I'm with Mark King, changes him to 306. Mark King was shot with a 30 yard six rifle. He was put in room 306. He was called to the balcony at three minutes to six. He was dead at 601. Probably just a coincidence that there was three odd sixes in that little line up there. And Jesse mentioned how odd it was that the front page of the paper mentioned Martin King staying in room 306 the day he was killed. And then, of course, when they went to call the police, the operator wasn't there, but she had a heart attack right when Martin King got killed. She had a heart attack right at the switchboard. And they couldn't even call nobody. And then you got that whole thing about the blood and all of that. I'll just leave all of that in there, but I want to tell you this. That right after Martin King died, 104 articles came out in the next year claiming that Jesse Jackson was the heir apparent to Martin King. He said three things. One, he had the blood of Martin King on his shirt. Two, he was the last person to talk to Martin King. Three, he was the only heir to King's throne. And the man who told him that was Don Rose. Don Rose, a white Jewish man in Chicago, was the man that told Jesse Jackson after he left Atlanta, he left Memphis, strangely. I did this video, I did this TV show in Chicago, The Last Days of Martin King on cable. Jesse Jackson saw the video. He called Al Sharpton at home, got mad at Sharpton for igniting me into doing the investigation. Sharpton and I give a lecture in New York together at the Borough Manhattan City College. When I get there, Sharpton's people rush me up to the private room. Sharpton says, man, I got to talk to you. He says, you don't know how influential this Mark King thing is. Jesse called me. He's pissed at me. He ain't mad at you. He pissed at me for getting you ignited. He said, but I got, I called all my friends, and they all gave me words of support for you, Steve. And Reverend Wyatt T. Walker, Jesse's man in New York, said, if Jesse ever mess with you, tell him this. Said, Jesse, how did you get out of Memphis the night Mark King was killed? And that the highway was closed? The buses were closed, the train was closed, and the airport was closed. How did you get out of Memphis? Throw that to the side. 104 stories come out after Martin dies. Jesse goes to Chicago, ends up at the city council, ends up on Today Show. On the way to the Day Show, Don Rose tells him he should be the heir apparent. The interesting thing is that when Harold Washington died, Don Rose told Tim Evans, the man who fought to be Harold Washington's heir apparent, the man who was touted as Harold Washington's replacement two months before he died, Tim Evans, was told by Don Rose and Jesse Jackson that he was the heir apparent to Harold Washington. Don Rose did Martin King. Don Rose did Harold Washington. Don Rose is still alive today. Many people got hung up in Don Rose-ism and followed behind the behind the scenes anointed leadership and never recovered. Jesse, of course, malfeasant, great money, push, push, uh, messes up $550,000 of government money. It was over three million. They made a settlement. They allowed, the amount was later lowered in negotiations to one million, then to 550,000. Jesse Jackson was allowed to pay back $125,000 a year. And that's when he jumped to the Rainbow Coalition. Soon as Operation Push repaid his debt, now he's back in Chicago at Operation Push. But any black man now, piece of government grant, he go to jail. He don't get no sign-out agreement. My point is not to spend all this time on Jesse Jackson, but it's to say that even right now, right now, uh, uh, what's up in the state of the race, is that we are bound to make the same mistakes because we never punish the people who perpetrated the last garbage we got stuck in. And because they've gone un, un, acted against, it's likely they would try it again. Now what I'm going to do now, i got to pass the hat for Brother Copley. I, 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 
before we walk out of here, I want to preview for you this CIA thing. Now, I suggest to you that Copley CIA style is like nothing you ever seen on the issue. They have an investigation in the MENA, and they've already proved that nothing went on there. The whole foundation of proving they sold drugs goes down in MENA. Hey, anybody ever seen that book by Tyrone Powers, uh, The Eyes of My Soul, of an FBI agent? Well, in that book, he don't mention nothing about Ricky Ross and all them other things he know about. Anyway, let me say this. Uh, the only way I make it is if you help me make it. Only way my family make it is if you help us make it. I appreciate Brother Rodney, the Black United Front of Houston, Brother Harry, and all those people who helped them who were here tonight to help the brother have a chance to share his information. I'm going on limited versions of it because I don't have time to do the depth of it, which is why those tapes back there are there because there's deeper information in there. If you, I've been in places with Brother Collin, people write $100 checks, $1,000 checks, I don't have the gall to ask you on that level, but I am that deserving. I'm not ashamed to ask to support myself, so I hope you all do the best you can. I, I really appreciate that you do. Please come tomorrow at 4, because we're going to go straight into the CIA issue. And I guarantee you, it will be very important for you to know the cornerstones of the issue the way I see it, so you can be an effective action here within that issue. And uh, I, now usually I like to pass the hat because I do better when I pass it. Because people tend to want to put more money in it when I'm there standing there holding it. So don't make me feel like I need to be there. And if you got uh, $200 in your pocket and you throw two in there, I mean, that's all right. But if you could help, I'm the one you want to help, believe me. Even though you may never see me again in your life, I ain't going nowhere much. You might not want to come around no COVID program no more. <laughs> CIA, CIA, CIA. Uh, also, again, I got all that uh, new stuff on the boule. I got all these secret documents on the boule and military intelligence. It's in a two video tape set back there called Boulay Secret Relationships. It's the two lectures for $50. Hold on just one second, Tom. It's also the last days of Mark Key four hour lecture. It's back there in the video, real clear, all on overhead. It's $40 from Florida a and last week. Uh, also, uh, the B Center 666 is the audio that's similar to the Golden Mindy stuff. Uh, Base Theory on Evil is the video, and the old takers are the videos that match it. Uh, last Days of Mark King is back there in audio and video. Copley and Karinka on LA Radio is back there. Uh, 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 I appreciate all of, all of the support. Uh, you can give. Uh, uh, on the CIA drug issue, it is very important to prove that they sell drugs. You've got to tell how they sell drugs in the past. Tomorrow we're going to look at Sam G and Cotton. Make sure everybody got Anybody it. missed the bucket? Anybody want to put another $100 in there? Just put it in there this time. Yes, Brother Thomas, you want to ask us? Uh, yeah. This brother came all the way from... No, no, no. Oh, that's right. What Thomas? I'm sorry. You look like Brother Thomas. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hey, I'm sorry. Call, 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 call. You got the same shirt on there. Carl Roy Gay King allowed flat. Carl Roy Gay King allowed flat. Right. Well, let's go back to that tape that got released by Lyndon Johnson when he called the white senator. He said, look, I got a nigga. I'm on point, and I don't want no trouble. Now, when his name go down to the Senate, I don't want you to cut his, he said, cut his groin out or something. Now he's talking to the, he said, well, you know I can't vote for it. Then he said, I didn't say you had to, but just don't treat him. He's a good Negro. He's done everything I asked. He traveled with me to Europe and everywhere. So all of that, and of course, he was Malcolm's nemesis. And Malcolm in the New World Order. I mean, it's an unprecedented thing about what would the impact be if Malcolm was still alive. And uh, that's a whole other thing in itself. Anyway, so we want to be up on that. But Sam G. and Connor sold drugs with the CIA. We're going to hear him talk about that tomorrow. Uh, Ex-CIA officer John Stockwell, he talked about in his book about the Golden Triangle. CIA sold drugs, the Golden Crescent. CIA sold drugs, the French Connection. Remember the movie? CIA selling drugs with the French intelligence. Ex-CIA officer, former head of station chief in Africa. We're going to look at him tomorrow. And when this is the check. Strangely, FEMA gave maximum orders for a congressional district a $3,500,000 grant, right?
right before this issue got started, they had African American Unity Day around a six foot long FEMA check. I don't know what that's about, but if they fail, I'm going to be in the ass about this check. Uh, uh, who's been in the CIA? We're going to look at the directors, the deputy directors. You need to know those names. Mina, Mina, Arkansas. You need to know about the airplane traffic that was in Mina, the secret airplane.